War never changes. Hello fellow Chosen, and welcome to the Memory Modules Guide for Fallout 2. Memory Modules are computer chips you can find throughout the game that, when applied to the right computer, can permanently boost your strength, perception, charisma, and intelligence once each. All four of these multicolored chips are found in locations that can prove rather challenging to enter, and because of that I strongly recommend being at least around level 12. I will also be showing you the very computer that these modules are compatible with. Let's go get some stat boosts. The first of the four chips we're going for is the Red or Strength module. This one is located in Vault City. More specifically, it's inside of Vault 8, normally accessible to only citizens of Vault City. In order to gain entry, you can have citizenship documents forged in customs if you don't meet all the ridiculous stat requirements for the citizenship test. No matter what, it's about the destination here, not the journey, right? Go to the second level of the vault, into the living quarters. The room that contains the module is on the northwest side, second from the left. What makes this one more of a challenge is that the door is stuck, and requires a strength of 8 or a crowbar and a strength of 7 to open. If you have a naturally high strength, this won't be a problem. If you need some extra, however, you can don some power armor or take a dose or two of buff out instead. After the doors open, it'll be jammed entirely and won't even close. Not your problem though, the red module is in the locker straight ahead. The second to claim is the yellow memory module, which increases your character's intelligence. The location of this module isn't even on the map when the game starts. In order to get it to come up, you'll need to head to New Reno and perform work for the Wright family on the east side of town. Complete the Wright's first mission in finding out who killed Richard Wright, and Orville will then ask you to gain entry into an army base also known as Sierra Army Depot. The location will then appear on your map just northwest of New Reno. If the bodies out in front don't give it away, this place is deadly. I'll leave discovering how to open the front door for you though. After you've busted your way in, disable the force fields via the password in the front desk drawers, then go to the rooms just east of you. Towards the back, in the first standing locker, you'll find the yellow memory module. Module number three is the green one, which will enhance your character's perception. This one is also found in a military establishment with a similar situation as a Sierra Army Depot, but without the terrifying gun turrets. On the south side of the map, east of San Francisco, is the military base, formerly where the mutants were being created for the Master's Army. The entrance is collapsed, but combining the mining cart, metal pole, and some dynamite, all which can be found here, will get it back open, provided you have the strength to push the cart. After getting inside, Mariposa will be dark and full of poisonous mutated rats. But back to searching for the module, just kidding, it's on level 3, and the elevator is the only way for you to get there. Unsurprisingly, the power generator isn't working, so the elevator doesn't have any power. You can run your own repair skill against the generator, or if Vic is in your team, he can get it working no problem. Once you've jumped through all these metaphorical hoops, take the now working elevator to level 3, squash some more rats, then search the nearest room with the rusted out locker, there you will find the green module. The only difficult thing about acquiring the blue memory module, which improves your charisma, is getting to its location. This one is found at the Enclave Outpost, Navarro. The story of Fallout 2 will take you to this point of the game eventually, and this objective will also gain you access to the computer you can use the modules on. Getting to Navarro, which is on the coast between Arroyo and San Francisco, is best done with the car and a high outdoorsman skill, some patience with saves coming, and or the firepower to take out those Enclave patrols. After you reach the Enclave outpost, you'll start at a gas station? It's just a front, and the single guard can be convinced to let you into the base or just killed. Take the trap door in his shack and go down into Navarro's underground. Here you can take the absurdly long corridor over to the outfitter, who doesn't give your looks a second thought, and tells you to gear up in the next room full of lockers. There's tons of goodies here that they just hand to you, including the blue module found in the fifth locker down. Now that you have all four modules, you'd like to use them, I'm sure. Well, since the blue one is found in Navarro, make sure you stick around to find the Vertibird plans too, because you'll need to bring those back to the Brotherhood building back at San Francisco. After you do this, you'll be allowed entry into the Brotherhood bunker. 
and given access to the medical terminal known as ACE. This is the computer that can use the memory modules. Each of the procedures will take multiple weeks in game to complete. Unless you're retrieving Chip's spleen or something, you won't have to worry about the time these procedures take. If you've followed this guide, you'll now have a permanent one point boost to your strength, perception, charisma, and intelligence for the rest of the game. Which area was most challenging for you? It was the Sierra Army Depot, wasn't it? Let me know in the comments. If this guide was entertaining or helpful for you, do whatever you see fit to show that. And if you're interested in being among the awesome wastrels credited on screen and want to support me at the same time, check out the Patreon. Thanks so much to Wasteland Legends Fen and thank you for watching. This is Kato Genesis wishing you a safe journey in finding the Gek.